Hey fellow explorers, a common question I get is, Chris, what camera did you use to make this video? And the answer is I actually have a lot of cameras that I use to make my travel videos. And so in this video, I've got them all out here in front of me and I'm gonna be going over each one, telling you why I take this specific one, why I like this one. And one of the things about making travel videos is they have to be small and they have to be lightweight. And so all of this gear is travel and lightweight approved. Some of it's a little heavier duty than others that I take on more specialty shoots and others I take on smaller shoots. Uh, and I'll even tell you some of the things I've bought that I, I don't think I like so much and maybe I regret purchasing some of these things. I don't regret purchasing any of them because I got to purchase them to try them out, but there are some that I definitely use more than others. And so let's go ahead and start first with my newest camera. This is the DJI Pocket 3 camera. And what's really neat about this camera is this is the camera right here and it is a little gimbal. So this camera with this little um, like joystick here on the back, you can move it up and you can move it down and you could move it left and you can move it right. But most importantly, this is what I use for my walking tours. Well, this isn't what I use for my walking tour. Actually, I've used it for my last two. I use it for my Chinatown walking tour and my Olvera Street walking tour in Los Angeles. I had previously been using the DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which is this little one right here. The biggest difference between these two cameras is the Pocket 3 has a bigger screen on it. Can you see that big screen that's on there? Uh, and this one's a little fatter. The Pocket 3 is fatter than this one. So I use the Pocket 2 when I want something really small that I can put in my pocket. This one's a little bit bigger, so it doesn't quite go in my pocket. But what I really like about these two is they come with a included wireless microphone. So uh, as uh, many of you know, because I say it all the time, the most important thing in a video is the audio. The audio is actually more important than the picture. If people can't hear you, if you're talking, then they won't want to watch it. And so the DJI uh, Pockets, uh, that's why I say they're better than like a GoPro, is they come with these wireless microphones. You just turn them on and they connect directly to the handheld and you can get really clear audio um, connected to it super easily. Uh, charges up, it'll last for hours. And so this is super good. It also comes with these carrying cases, a little wide angle lens in here. Uh, and if you want to get all the doodads, they sell a creator combo that comes with a little tripod and the microphone and all those fancy things, which are the ones I've got. By the way, if you want to check out any of this stuff, uh, links in the description to Amazon links to all these products so you can get the details of the ones and zeros and the numbers. All right. Now, if I'm going to be going out to make a high quality vlog, something I want to shoot in beautiful 4K with beautiful bokeh or like the blur behind me or things like that, then I'm going to take this out here. What is this? This is the Sony ZV-E1. Um, nice vlogging camera because it has a nice flip out screen that you can flip around. It helps if I turn it on so you can actually see that. Take the lens cap off. Um, this is a uh, the, the, the little brother of the um, Sony A7S III, which is what I'm actually using to shoot this right now, is the A7S III on this live stream, because um, it's a little bit bigger, but this one's a little bit smaller. What do I have this attached to? This little tripod that I have right here. They call this the uh, Sony GPVPT2BT wireless shooting grip. I'm not going to do those letters and numbers for you anymore. They're in the description if you want to check them out. But what's neat about this um, little tripod and handle is that it wirelessly will connect to the camera. And so you can start and stop the camera from this handle. It also has like a little easy button you can push on it to turn the camera around on the handle. So if you want to do selfie shots, it's really quite sturdy. I haven't had my camera fall off of this thing just yet. Uh, and so this is pretty nice. Um, what's the microphone I have on top of it? This is not the standard microphone that comes with it. This is an add-on. This microphone is the Sony ECM-M1. Um, what's cool about this microphone is it has all of these little uh, knobbers here on the back that will control the directional pattern of the microphone. So you can set it to pick you up just in front. You can set it to pick you up in back. You can set it to pick up in both. But so it's kind of neat if you're 
behind the camera and you don't want it to pick up audio in front, it's got a switch to go ahead and do that. So I like that microphone up there. Uh, it's also a removable lens camera, so you can remove the lenses and replace them. Uh, there are three different lenses that I use on this. Most often I use this uh, 16 to 35 G Master 2 lens. Um, this is kind of my like standard shooting lens, but if I need to get something that's at more of a distance, then I will use this lens right here. This is the Sony 24 to 70 G Master 2, so this will give me more zoom further away. Uh, and if I'm going out and I need a really wide angle lens and I'm going to be shooting in really low light, then I use the Sony F1.8 14 G Master right here um, that has a bit of like a like a fisheye lens look to it. But all of my like Christmas light videos that I've done or Halloween videos that are out in low light, I shoot with this particular lens. Um, okay, now if I really want this camera to be stable, like in handheld, isn't gonna cut it enough, well then what I do is I take out the DJI Ronin RS3 gimbal. This is a really sturdy gimbal and this will hold uh, that camera with all of that glass on it just fine. What I like about this gimbal is uh, you can just push this power button here and everything, here, we'll put it right here, and everything will unlock and go into the mode that you can use to shoot it. Right now it's gonna vibrate because it's not balanced because I don't have a camera on it, but then you push that button again and it locks. It also has a really great digital screen, so it's super easy to balance. I have bought a number of gimbals. Uh, I bought a Manfrotto gimbal and I bought a Jiyun gimbal and I find those, I just spend way too much time balancing everything in the gimbal and not enough time shooting. So if you are looking for a gimbal for a big beefy camera, um, definitely consider the DJI RS3. Uh, after about an hour of holding this out though, my arms get pretty sore and so I only use this for um, short shoots that I need to have stabilized footage. Okay, what about if I need to put it on a tripod? My uh, current travel tripod is this one right here. This is the Peak Design Carbon Fiber Tripod. It packs up into this nice little case Oh, and I should point this out first, is it matches the Peak Design Everyday Backpack, and the Peak Design Backpack has these water bottle pockets on the side, water bottle or tripod pockets right there. So it makes it super convenient for carrying out in the day because it just fits right there in this backpack. This backpack also fits this gimbal with that camera on top of it that I don't have to take it out. Okay, so this tripod, what do I like about this tripod? Well, it's made of carbon fiber and so it's really quite light. It has a really good latch system up on top. Um, it is really quite sturdy and um, overall just a really made, well-made tripod. I am not worried about my camera falling off this tripod. Um, it has another uh, like head up here that you can raise up the center column too, which I like it has a ball head on top So lots of great things about this only great not great thing about this is the price uh, This is a fairly pricey tripod, but uh, the the category that I often go in for a lot of these things is uh, For a tripod tripods don't change all that much And so you can easily buy one tripod and then use this tripod uh, for the rest of your life. It also has a cool cell phone mount that you can take the top off and put the cell phone mount on. Um, if I'm out and I can't carry a lot of stuff and I just wanna shoot lightweight, then I use this little setup right here. What is this? Uh, this is a cell phone and it is on top of a Insta360 selfie stick. This, uh, if I push this button like this, so it's a selfie stick just like this that has a Manfrotto cell phone clip mount on the top with a Joby ball head on top of it. And so what's great about this is since it's a selfie stick, I can extend it. I can use the ball head to point it at me because it's a phone. I can use the selfie screen or the selfie camera to get those shots, take it wherever I want to go. Uh, and because this selfie stick also has tripod feet on it, 
than if I need to set it up on top of a wall or something so I can get shots of myself, then it's absolutely no problem just like that. Uh, the phones I generally use are the Samsung Galaxy series of phones. This is the uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is the one that I typically have up on there. Why don't I have it up on there? Well, because I wanted to show you this next one. If I need more stabilized footage while I'm out and about, then I will use the DJI OM6 gimbal. As you can see, this is a much smaller gimbal than this gimbal. The RS3 that I showed you earlier, this one is for big heavy cameras and lenses. The OM6 is designed for cell phones. And the nice thing about this gimbal is it has this magnetic clip that you take off right here and you put this magnetic clip onto the back of the phone just like this and then it has a magnetic attachment that you just bring it close and it slots right in and then we can push the button and we can turn it on and now we have a very stabilized thing. We can push another button on here and we can change the orientation to be uh, wide ways, which is the way that I'm typically shooting, kind of like this. So this is another way that I can shoot walking tours or hotel room tours, smooth footage. This gimbal comes with tripod feet so you can stand it up. It also has a built-in selfie stick so you can get a little bit more distance if you're using it from a vlogging type thing. Uh, only thing I found about the OM6 is that it gets tired sometimes. Like if it's hot, it does heat up and so it can overheat and then just kind of like whack itself out, uh, which is why I tend, if I don't really need the gimbal part, then I use the selfie stick because there's a little bit less of that balancing act to do. Okay, and as I push this thing in, it kind of whacks out. All right, so I will take my phone back off this gimbal. Now, what do I wanna do if I wanna get good audio? Well, that's a problem if you're recording with cell phones because the microphones on a cell phone aren't that great and so if you wanna get any distance away, you need a good microphone. And so I've got two that I like. Um, the one I've been using the most is the DJI mic. Um, open this up, it is a set that has a <laughs> receiver and two wireless microphones in a charging case. And so this is the receiver and it comes with two little bits on it. One is to plug into USB-C, the other one is to plug into an iPhone. So this will work whether you have an Android or an iPhone, you put that connector right into there and then you slap that into your phone. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn around that way so you can see the screen on it. There's a little screen on there that shows you uh, whether or not it's connected to the other wireless microphones. This is then the wireless microphone that I clip on my bag or I can clip on my shirt like that. And now all of a sudden I've got really good wireless audio up to my cell phone. Um, and what I like about the DJI mics, they sound good. They don't have much interference. They're easy to set up, but most of all, I like this part that just connects directly into the cell phone. It's basically like attached to it, so it's one unit. Um, the other wireless mic set that I use is the Rode Wireless Go. And it's in this little bag right here. Uh, you can also buy a charging kit for the Rode Wireless Go's. These are ones that you probably also see on a lot of YouTubers. They're more square instead of long. What I don't like about the Rhodes as much is the, um, this is this is the receiver part that has to connect onto the cell phone and it just has a, it just comes with the cable. So like in order to use this with a cell phone in any sort of like gimbal configuration or something like that. You plug it in and then and then what do you what do you do with this? What do you do with this? Then you gotta figure out a way to like mount this on the here, or mount this on the back of the here. Anyway, not as convenient as the uh, DJI mic plug is. The uh, newest Rode Wireless Go's, these are the Wireless Go 2's, the Wireless Go 2 Pro. Now the newest one they released about a month ago has what they call 32-bit um, float, meaning that you can't peak the microphone, meaning that no, no matter how loud you speak, 
um, it won't distort. Uh, and so that's a pretty nice feature of the newest ones. These also have onboard recording. So if you get disconnected from the phone or the receiver, it's cool. It'll still record onboard here because each of these has a little bit of memory. Um, in the live chat, I need to bring the uh, mouse over here so I can click on these. Uh, Jet and Compass says, I haven't attached a mic to my Sony camera. Right, so what I should point out back on the Sony cameras and why I'm like all in on Sony cameras for my high-end stuff is that they have um, what they call the intelligent hot shoe on the top. And so there's this little port right here that you can plug these microphones in. They have connectors on them. And so the microphones just plug right in digitally to this camera, which means there is no cable to connect from the microphone to the camera and there's no power, so there's nothing to disconnect. You don't need to charge it. It gets its power from the camera battery. And so I feel like Sony's, they call it the MI Hot Shoe. I feel like this is what really makes Sony cameras uh, unique for me and why I've been using them for uh, the past 10 years. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, Serum says, uh, last week we saw Chris's luggage room and this week we see his camera room. All right, yes, and some people said, Chris, why were you late to start this live stream? Because uh, I was getting all this gear out, a lot of gear to bring out here to make sure it was all at arm's reach. Uh, and the packing live stream that I was gonna do this week, I'm still gonna do it. Uh, it's gonna be in about two weeks for the packing live stream. I wanted to do this one here because uh, Black Friday's coming up and so I know a lot of people are potentially looking at camera gear to get and so you know you might want to get some of the things that uh, I like or I've found useful. Okay, if I'm out and about doing interviews, then I've got this little thing right here. What is this thing? This thing is a plastic stick with a foam thing on it, and you can put these Rode microphones right on them. And so uh, it's also super convenient because it will connect to the same receiver, connect to the cell phone, and then to make it look like a microphone, then you just put that little foam on it, and it's got that Rode Rods Go piece. You can have a conversation with them with that little microphone. This um, stick costs about $25. I will say the foam head that this stick comes with has the really ugly road lettering on it. And so I bought another one um, that's just black. So I'm not constantly advertising road wherever I go. Okay, um, the other thing when using a cell phone to record stuff is you use a lot of battery pretty quickly. And so I carry with me this Samsung 10,000 milliamp USB-C travel charger uh, that also has Qi charging. So what I like about this um, and if you have any of these Samsung devices, if you get any moisture in the charging port, then it'll be like, ah, it's wet. Come back later when it dries out. Um, but if you have Qi charging, which is the wireless charging, then you can always charge it just by putting it up right onto the back end of the cell phone. Um, kind of like a fail safe to make sure I can always charge it. Um, but I've found this to be a pretty reliable charger. You know, Samsung makes a good product rather than some of the no name ones that you might get off Amazon. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so, uh, Serum says the next video we need is a, uh, clothes 101, possibly all yellow t-shirts and jackets. Yes, I should do a, what clothes do you need to wear for your next trip? It's all yellow clothes. All you need is a yellow t-shirt and yellow jackets. Brooklyn Joe wants to know if next week we'll get a bidet tour. If that's what you want, if you're looking for the Yellow Productions bidet tour, I can probably make that happen. All right. Um, so now for really good audio, if I am shooting, um, like someplace that I'm stationary and I can bring this, then I will shoot with this microphone. This is the Rode NTG USB microphone. This whole thing is the microphone. This will also connect via USB right into, uh, the Android port there. And what have I got it on? I've got it mounted on a microphone stand with a Joby cell phone mount up on top. And so I can put my cell phone up here, send that down, turn this knob, plug this in to the phone. And now I've got a setup that I can 
put on a wall or hold out like this that has the phone and also a really good microphone in it. And yes, this microphone sounds so much better than the wireless microphones. They're just such greater fidelity. Um, almost sounds nearly as good as the microphone that I've got mounted up to do these live streams. Uh, this one does have to charge though. You have to charge it before you use it, which is a little bit of a bummer sometimes. You get a microphone out and you don't have any battery life and then you're like, ah! Which is actually one of the reasons why for the DJI mic, these things I showed you earlier, that's got three of them in here, I actually have two of these DJI mic sets. Uh, so that if I run out of battery life on one, I've got a second one and I can just switch to that because they don't have removable batteries. You have to charge the ones in here. And so that takes some time. If I'm on the middle of a shoot, I don't want to um, have to like wait 30 minutes for all the stuff to charge and then get back to shooting. All right. Um, so my main camera, Chris, none of these are your main camera. This is my main camera, the one that I take on most of my, what I'll call it, big trips. So our last big trip to Singapore, Taiwan, and Japan, I was rocking two of these. Why do I have two of these? Well, you know, when you're in a remote place in a foreign country near Mount Fuji and your camera breaks, you want a second one because you can't just go right next door to the camera store. So I have two of these. That way if one breaks, I move to the other one. Um, the footage looks the same. What is this? This is the Sony FDR8X53 4K Handycam. Yes, it is like a dad camcorder right here. I am a dad, so I can use the camcorder. Um, but if you think I'm not cool, Mr. Beast uses these to record his videos. So uh, they're proof. What do I like about this camera? It's basically like a gimbal built into the camera. So as I move this thing around, the lens that's inside of it actually moves around too. Uh, and so I can give this to OC Girl, I can give this to my mom, I could give this to a friend and they can hold it and it'll be super stable because it's got this big mechanically stabilized lens inside of it. You'll also notice it's got this thing on top that's blinking. This is another Sony wireless microphone system. This one is called the um, ECMW1M. So this goes into the hot shoe up on top to record audio. And then this is the microphone part of it. They connect via Bluetooth. This gets powered via a AAA battery. This gets powered directly from the camera. And so I never run out of batteries because I can always just slap a few more AAA batteries into this. So this is the like little black thing you often see in a lot of my videos that I actually often put on my camera bag sling that goes right here. Uh, what I also like about this is the batteries, easy removable batteries, big batteries. With the biggest batteries on this, I can get like four hours of shooting time on this thing. I'll carry a couple 512 gigabyte SanDisk cards with me, um, which, you know, after a couple weeks, I'm easily filling up a terabyte or more of video. What do I have this on? I have this on the Joby Gorillapod 5K. This is like this little flexible tripod that you can flex all these different things and you can curve them up if you want to, to like wrap it around a pole or something like that. Um, what I'm generally doing with this is I'm generally, uh, you know, holding it out as its own kind of selfie stick, but I can like curve it to whatever way that I want to, or I'm putting it in tripod mode so that I can like hold it up on a railing and then the Joby Gorillapod also has a quick release, so you can push this little button in right here on the back, and then you can just slide the camera off. So if I don't need this, then I can just easily put the camera on, but if I wanna put it back on this, then I just slide it and it clicks in. I don't have to constantly screw a piece in and fiddle with it. Um, it also has on this uh, head a, um, what do they call this? Like a liquid bubble thing. So you can see whether it's straight or level, which is nice if you're like putting it on a ledge or someplace like that to make sure you know you've got all the legs adjusted properly. Okay. Um, and uh, Steve Morris Music says, all you really need is an iPhone 13 Pro Max with one terabyte of storage and you pretty much set all boxes checked. If that works for you, my man, good for you, Steve, but uh, Brooklyn Joe says, Chris, you're not drinking today. I'm thirsty. What should I drink today? Today, I am drinking Thai, Thai tea from Ayara. Ayara is a Thai restaurant near LAX airport. Uh, and they make some of my favorite cow soy. 
Mmm. And some of my favorite Thai tea. They make it in house and they bottle it up like this. It's pretty good. If you're near LAX airport and you want to get some Thai food, check out Ayara, A-Y-A-R-A. -A. I probably should wipe my mouth now so I don't have a um, Thai tea mustache. You know, the challenge with doing these like product sort of things is to get an appropriate light of appropriate level of lighting that works on kind of me and the stuff back here, but that doesn't blow out when I hold it up like this. Clearly, I've not figured out the lighting dialed in the right way so that the whites don't blow out when I hold them right out here to put things close to the camera. I'll, uh, I'll work on that. This is only the second time I've done uh, one of these live streams as a standing up shot instead of a sitting down shot. Okay. Um, and uh, Totally Diamond Painting says, would the traveling princess be able to use this camera? She probably would be able to use this camera. I could probably give it to her and she could use it. The reason why I might not give it to her though is because I probably wouldn't want her to put her fingerprints on this lens because this lens is pretty hard to clean. Uh, I would probably have her use the GoPro that I'm gonna get to in just a little bit. Um, I should point out for cleaning, here's a little accessory that I like when I said I'm going to show you accessories to clean my lenses. Um, this was something I found from another YouTuber when they were doing a video like this uh, on, you know, like all their gear was these Zeiss lens wipes. Uh, these come in a pack of 200 and they're basically like little moistened towelettes, except they're specifically designed with liquid to clean lenses. And so these have been perfect to clean all these camera lenses. I also use them to clean my sunglasses. I also use them to clean my monitors. And so if you've been looking to take nasty smudges off any of your um, optics, uh, get these Zeiss lens wipes. You can also buy from Amazon. I'm gonna put the link in the description below so it's easy for you to find. Okay, some other special purpose cameras that I have uh, right here. I have the Sony ZV-1. I'm going to take this one off this little tripod here. Uh, this is the one that if we want to take photos with a high quality camera, but we don't want to lug a big DSLR removable lens camera, we take this Sony ZV-1. You can see this camera is really quite small. Um, and when you turn it on, then it has this lens that like pops out. Uh, and so you can get a pretty good zoom on this because it's a zoom lens. It's a power zoom lens that comes back and forth, takes pretty good photos. Um, it also has the intelligent hot shoe on top because it's a Sony camera, so it can use a lot of these microphone accessories. Uh, and this one is about as like small as it gets for a vlogging camera and as small as it gets for a um, portable photo camera. So if we're taking thumbnails and things like that, uh, we're generally using the Sony ZV-1, not to be confused with the ZV-E-1. The ZV-E-1 is the big brother to the ZV-1. And this one will also work with the same wireless shooting handle that I showed you here before. That'll connect via Bluetooth. And then there's been a few newer versions of the Sony ZV-1 incarnation, uh, but we like this one just to it's small. Let's just put it in your pocket um, and you're ready to go. Okay, uh, if I'm shooting in really low light, then I will take out the camera that is on uh, the tripod where I'm shooting right now, which is the Sony a7S III. I will also take that one out if I'm like doing a shot that I really want to make sure I get the footage because the Sony a7S III, one of the big differences between that one and the ZV-E1 is the a7S III has two SD card recording slots where this one has one. And yes, I have had my SD cards fail before. Uh, and so being able to record on two SD cards at the same time is really um, a great capability if you're shooting something like a wedding or a sponsored bit for a travel board where you can't go back again. Um, that's a nice capability to have. Uh, Brandon Torres on the live stream says the ZV-1 is a perfect sized camera. Yeah, you know, this is what they often say, the best camera um, is often the one you have with you. If your camera is so big and clunky, you can't bring it with you, it's not very good if you can't use it in the moment. What I also like about the ZV-1, you just open the screen and it turns on. So there's no other things, there's no other lens caps, just open and close. 
uh, the same way that the my main camera that I showed you right here, same thing, to turn it on, all you do is flip open the screen and then it turns on, which is super nice. Unlike something like this one, the ZV-E1, you have to open the screen, you have to flip this to on, and then you have to take off the lens cap and then put the lens cap somewhere, like in your pocket or your backpack. Chris, is that really that hard? You know, if you're trying to get the moment, um, like a moment that something's gonna happen, three seconds can actually make a big difference between getting it or not. Um, and uh, Alex says, dual SD card slots is clutch. Um, Steve Morris says, do you think I will make that connection? Sorry, I had to type the other half separately. If I miss the connection, what can I do? I don't know what, I don't know what connection you're trying to do, Steve. Uh, you have a travel question about going to Bangkok. Ask me that again when we get to the Q&A section. Um, all right. Now, if I want to get some aerial shots, some drone shots, then the drone I like to take with me is in this little bag right here. Why is it in this little bag right here? And why do I like this drone? It's so small. It's easy to pack. This is all travel gear. So this isn't the world's best drone, but this is a very small packable drone that takes good footage. This is the DJI Mavic Mini 2. It folds up to be this small and then flies in the air. Um, the scenes I've taken of like some almond blossoms and some beach shots uh, I use with this. I use it pretty sparingly. I use it when I go out to the country or the suburbs where I'm not worried about flying by airports or tall buildings. Um, you know, it is like the, the controller is bigger than the actual, um, is, is bigger than the actual uh, drone for this one. And I think now they have the Mavic Mini 3. Um, what I would suggest if you get these is uh, you get the Fly More kit, which comes with three different batteries because the batteries on these things are so small, they don't last very long. You get like 20 minutes of flying. Um, and so having three batteries is another one that's really important. You don't want to miss that shot because your battery wasn't charged. Um, and because it all packs up into this nice padded case, easy to just go ahead and toss in a suitcase and take with you. If I'm shooting driving scenes, then I'm going to use what's in this box right here. I'm going to use the GoPro Hero 10 Black, um, which uh, Kathy asks, what camera would I have my daughter use? Today I'd probably have her use this camera because this thing is nearly indestructible. Uh, I don't think GoPros make the world's best cameras, but they do make some of the world's most durable cameras. And if I've got something attached to my car with the GoPro windshield suction cup, that's what this is. It's a big suction cup that with this little clamp right here, clamps down on your windshield, it, like it won't go anywhere. And the GoPro attaches right on that. Uh, and you can mount your windshield and have it outside your car and shoot some really good driving time lapses. So a lot of the driving scenes that you see me shoot, uh, if the camera's on the outside of the car, I'm using the GoPro Hero 10 with the windshield mount. Or if I'm shooting underwater scenes, then I'm using the GoPro um, floating hand mount right here. There's another thing I have to attach on it to attach the GoPro onto this. But what's nice about this, so the GoPros are waterproof uh, and this floating handle, if for some reason I dropped it, um, it would float to the top with this floating handle. My uh, recent bodyboarding or how to boogie board videos I shot using the GoPro and this waterproof handle. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, if I am... Um, if I want to record in the car with my cell phone from the dash, then I use a friction mount like this because my cell phone I'm probably going to want to keep inside the car because <laughs> it's worth more money and has uh, my YouTube account and things like that on it. So I don't want to not have it for the rest of my trip where the GoPro, you know, if that thing goes away, whatever, it's not a big deal. Uh, and so this is like a, it's kind of like basically a heavy bean bag with a cell phone clip to it. I'm out of cell phones to uh, slap onto this thing. Here, okay, I got one more. Uh, where this just goes right on there. 
and then I can put this on the dashboard and I can turn it right like that and I can shoot driving scenes from inside the car. I can pay attention to driving. This can be in the dashboard and get me going like maybe for a video that I'm doing about driving in Japan coming up. I might have used something like this. No name brand, but um, if you want one of these, they're like 25 bucks and I've got the link to that in the description below too. All right, we're getting really specialty here. Uh, this is a um, 360 camera. This is the Insta360 1RS 1 inch 360 camera. This is the lens cover that goes on it. It has two cameras, one on either side. It shoots 360 degree video, um, which I have some 360 degree videos on this channel, like 360 degree walking tours of Disneyland or things like that. But what people tend to use this for, um, and what I've used it for is like if I'm riding a bike and I wanna get shots of me riding the bike, well, because it shoots 360 degrees, you can like position this anywhere and then you can crop the footage that comes out of it so you can get like a decent shot regardless of where you hold it. Um, I don't use this one very much, but if I have a specialty shot that I need to get where um, I am unsure of how I could actually get it or hold it or point it at me, I need to hold it myself, I use this. They call it the disappearing selfie stick because the way the cameras are set up, then basically if you're holding this out, the selfie stick just kind of disappears uh, from the footage entirely. And a um, couple extra accessories here. I showed you the lens wipes to keep the lenses clean. The other way to keep them clean, I've got this little rocket blower. Which, which blows out a bunch of air. So if there's dust on the lenses or things like that, I blow it off with this little uh, $20 rocket blower. And if I need light someplace, then a challenge with lighting is lighting generally, you gotta plug it in. Uh, but this light right here, the Jiyun Molus X100 is an interesting light. This is the combo kit that comes with it. This is the light right here. This is a battery for the light. There's a reflector. You can power it from the wall too, um, but by plugging this in right here and taking this lens cover off and pushing this button and turning this knob, pushing this button and turning this knob, and turning this, it takes a while to turn on. Wow, that's really bright, huh? Yeah, there's a bright light. So uh, you can see, maybe I needed to use this light to help light uh, help light some of the stuff or things like that. Super bright. What I, If I'm in a hotel room or doing a hotel room tour, what I'll generally do just to get some extra light in the room is I'll actually point this, I'll point it up like this um, because it like adds an extra brightness level to the room. Compare it like that. Do you see how just pointing this light up there like that Brightens everything. I'm not pointing at the wall. I'm pointing it at the ceiling to do that. But the light reflects off the ceiling and all of a sudden it gives the room a nice warmer glow. Um, what is slightly disconcerting about this particular thing, it comes with all these yellow stickers on it uh, on all sides of this thing that say warning, 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 high temperature at the light holder, glaring light, exposure, close range will cause a fire. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't leave this thing unattended. And finally, um, to do all of my video editing, what do I carry with me? I carry a MacBook Pro right here. Uh, this is the MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. If I'm on the road editing, I use Final Cut Pro to edit while I am on the road. Um, which works really well on the uh, Apple Silicon on the MacBooks. I like just how compact this thing is. The battery life lasts for 10 hours. The editing is super speedy. Um, so this is pretty good. If I'm back at home, then I'm editing back here either on uh, Vegas from a company called Magix. It used to be owned by Sony or I'm editing on Adobe Premiere. All right, fellow explorers. Now that answers the question, Chris, what camera did you use for that video? As you can see, a lot of them, um, but if you're looking to pick up a new camera, just some ideas for what you have in your set, or you're wondering, Chris, what the heck goes on behind that camera? Um, now, now you know what goes on here, Yellow Productions.
Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. Brandon Torres says, that thing is pretty bright. That thing is pretty bright. Um, which is why, uh, like, it also comes with this reflector to put on top. And there's, like, some other, like, diffusion that you can put on top of it. But it is, like, the brightest light that I've been able to find in the smallest um, case. Which, again, is important if you're making travel content. Uh, Kathy says, wow, it took a lot of work to set this up uh, for all of us. Your viewers, thank you. Always look forward to these. Kathy, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for that note. Um, and yes, that's why I was uh, slightly late starting this live stream, was just to get all this gear out here, out from all the shelves and all the bags that it's usually in. Um, Rebecca says, Chris, I have a Sony a7 III with a Tamron lens, but I'm experiencing really bad stabilization. I'm thinking about the Sony G Master. Do you think that would improve the stabilization? Yes, I think so. I would definitely get, I would encourage you to get, it's this lens. It's the Sony G Master 16 to 35 II, GM2, um, which is the one I've got on this one right now. Um, I found this one does have pretty good um, optical stabilization in it. The lens is bigger, um, so, uh, you know, the a7 III doesn't have really great in-body image stabilization. If you were to upgrade to the ZV-E1, it also has better um, like digital stabilization applied to that too. I'm not trying to sell you a new camera, but yes, to answer your question of would the lens make a difference, is it gonna solve it? No, but it definitely would make a difference. Jet and Compass says, Chris, uh, that was very helpful. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Edison says, hey, what camera do you recommend if I want to capture some lovely moments during a flight? I mean, the view outside of the window. Um, so here's the thing outside the window. I mean, if you're on a flight, you don't want to look like super dorky. You don't want to have a big thing. I typically use my cell phone to capture views outside the window, which would be this phone right here, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Um, really to get the best view, you generally want to zoom in a bit. So this one has 3X and 10X lenses. Um, so something that has a zoom, like zooming in, you see those things more at a distance. Generally, if you have like a wide angle out the window, then everything's just so small that you don't uh, go ahead and see it. Um, but you know, like something like the ZV-E1 here that has the nice little zoom lens that comes out like that too. That's pretty good too. But the um, airline reviews that I did recently of like Singapore Airlines and United Airlines Premium Plus. Um, I shot that all on this S23 Ultra. What, 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 what this doesn't do well, that something like these bigger cameras will do well, or even the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, is cell phones generally don't shoot very well in low light conditions. So like shooting in the plane when it's dark and trying to shoot my meal at dinner when they've turned off the lights, this thing is garbage, and then I had to pull out a bigger, fancier camera to be able to uh, record that without it looking like <sniffs> Alex says, recommendations for a good 4K point and shoot, uh, just for fun, average shooting, DSLR, more my expertise. Um, I don't know, I mean, the, right, the, the, the ZV-1 or the whole ZV-1 line of things, I think is a really great point and shoot. You don't have to have different lenses on it. And um, there's a newer one that they've made like this that has the lens on it too. So that's what I uh, would look into if you're not looking for something with removable lenses. Alex says, always go with the brand name lenses. Yeah, and this is one where like, I held off for a really long time on the cameras with the removable lenses and the re removable glass, but just as I've gotten into shooting the little light thing, shooting the Christmas lights, shooting some of these things, uh, there was just no other way to really do it other than uh, with some of these capabilities. And the thing is you spend $2,000 on a piece of glass like this, but then you, you have it for the rest of your life because you can always buy new bodies and the lenses, they don't um, really change or evolve all that much. Um, Kathy says, I have an Insta360, but I'm not sure how to use it very well. Yeah, like the hardest thing about these 360 cameras is actually like editing the footage. Like what do you do with it? I mean, really to use it, you just turn it on and hold it. It's kind of what you do. <laughs> you don't need to do much. Stick it out, put it on the ground. Um, but like editing it and figuring out what footage you're gonna pull off, that's the hard part. And you know, this is one of the reasons, what like one of the things I vowed a couple years ago um, was like, 
footage I record, if I record something for a video, I'm actually going to edit it and make it. Because um, back in the day, I recorded a bunch of footage and just never made videos on it. And I'm like, and that's so sad. I've got all these videos from our trip to Spain that like never saw the light of day because I never got around to editing uh, the footage. Um, which is why this uh, kind of Christmas holiday between November and December uh, is going to be another Yellow Productions Vlogmas where every day between, I think, Thanksgiving and December, you're going to have a new video hitting your inboxes because I've got all these videos I recorded the past year that I want to make sure uh, get out to y'all before they get just um, too old and stale on my hard drive. All right, well, every live stream, I always give away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt, so let's go ahead and do that now. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, so uh, I always give away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt to somebody who can answer one of my questions. Uh, and my question to you is... What's my question to you? Hmm. These, uh, these lens wipes right here, what brand are these lens wipes made by? Um, and if you don't remember, you can look in the video description and I have the brand listed in the description with the Amazon link to take a look at them. But uh, these lens wipes have been really great to clean all of my lenses, even though they look like uh, little um, wet naps. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, congratulations to So It's Me, Laura. She was the first one to say Zeiss. Very good. Uh, second place goes to Lisa Lee. Third place goes to Panjo. Uh, but uh, the winner is So It's Me, Laura. Laura, send me an email. You'll find the link in the description to my email where you can uh, send me a note. And if you're wondering, uh, hey, how do you pick up a Yellow Productions crew shirt if you didn't win one? You can pick one up from the Yellow Productions shop. And if you're wondering when is the next live stream, you can sign up on the Yellow Productions update. Links to those are also in the description. Well, fellow explorers, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you all today. I uh, hope you got some great insights on some of this camera gear. Uh, and if you're watching this before Black Friday, I hope you find some good sales to feed your um, camera urge. Uh, to capture your next vacation. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.